this should be obvious, and it should be something that everyone knows. There shouldn't be a debate about it, and there shouldn't be any consternation or conflict about the potential of every single human being coming to the salvation of God that he's provided through his son Jesus Christ. You see, no one is beyond the opportunity to be saved. Everyone, anyone, at any point in time can be saved by God himself. Because you see, salvation isn't brought by man to himself. Salvation is given by God through his mercy. God determines whether or not a person is saved or not. And he does it according to his own will and his own way. He happens to have given us the opportunity to know the way he has chosen for us to go. And that is through his son, Jesus Christ, through the work that he's done. So that he would declare to the heavens and the universe the things that God prepared before the foundation of the world to handle the rebellion that went on in heaven and the corruption that goes on in creation. Now, since you weren't there, you're not in charge. You don't get to decide who can be saved and who can't. As a matter of fact, every single human being that was born under the sun, whether they be young or old, rich or poor, can be saved according to God's mercy. For it is not by works of righteousness which we have done, and a work of righteousness would even be confessing that you're a sinner, but rather it's according to his mercy he saved us. That's where people forget the part of who determines salvation. It's not our observation of someone making some declaration that automatically they're saved no matter what because God has to fulfill his own word. No, it's a matter of God's mercy and we fall under that grace that he's given us because it's a grace that was given to us lest we should boast and think that we could do anything and we would put out great evangelists and people by the millions would come and just get saved and go off and do their own thing. Of course not. Salvation always has been and always will be determined by the Almighty God, our Father, literally fulfilling His purposes and His design. For He has said, I have created a vessel of honor and I have created a vessel of wrath. Which are you? We were created for His good pleasure. We have no means by with which we can say to God, do this and command that God should act according to our will? No. Even Jesus, his own son, commended himself and committed his life as well as his will into the Father's keeping. And he said if there was any way, any shape or means or possibility that this cup that I must taste could be taken from me, God, I would that you would do that. For surely you're God. You could do something else. And God, the son, said, but even with all these things I want, not my will, but thy will be done. For he commended himself to him who was able to keep him from falling and present him faultless before himself, God, as holy. So God the Father gave him a name that was more excellent than all those in heaven. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Why? Because he trusted. He trusted in the Lord his God. He trusted in his Father. He knew God. And so when he gave up his deity to become flesh, he committed himself into his Father's care and keeping. And yes, he doubted. He feared. And he, at that moment, trusted in the Garden of Gethsemane when he said, not my will, but thy will be done. There are people today that will tell you that, oh no, somebody's so evil, there's no way that God could save them. No, we're not supposed to, you know, like, worry about those that are so far gone that, you know, we can't do anything for them. We should not share the gospel with those people or these kind of people because, after all, they're all evil. They're possessed. They're wrong. No. As a matter of fact, God said, I will do a new thing that you never even thought of, that you wouldn't even understand. And then, well, surely as much as you think that you know my ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways beyond your understanding. And God said that to the Jew who said, hey, salvation comes from the Jews. We're telling everybody about the you know, Torah. We think that we've got the right way to God. We have the righteousness of God. We have God, the living God, with us. So you follow us, Gentiles. 
And Jesus himself, after the prophets had been sent to warn Israel, after God himself appeared himself to the people, Jesus said, you don't even know who you're following. And so today we have people that tell me to follow Israel or to follow this or to follow that. No, you follow the living God because your salvation comes from Jesus Christ. You are a child of God created in the image of God and your determination of where you should be as a distinction of creation that God has made you into being should be in heaven. But should you reject that salvation that God has provided for you and if God determines that in your heart you have rejected him in some way, however he has determined that, you will go to hell, no matter what you say or what you do. You see, it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. They are new every morning and they better be. Because as you know, when you look around the world, it's not hard to find sin. But it's almost impossible to find perfection. And the reality is, God is perfect. That's where we're going. You see, salvation could never have been about the things we do. Because if it was, then we would have made it a small, little, exclusive club, kind of like what the scribes and Pharisees did, kind of like what Christians do today. A lot of legalists say, oh, well, you got to be baptized in order to be saved. Oh, well, you got to read your Bible in order to be saved. Oh, you got to make this profession of faith in front of thousands of people in order to be saved. Oh, you got to go to you know an altar call in order to be saved. No. What you've got to do is call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Because if you called upon the name of the Lord for salvation and cried out to God and God heard you and answered, you'd be saved. Because it's according to His mercy He saved us. Not according to your will, not according to your theology, not according to your dogmas or doctrines, not according to what you think you understand of the salvation process with which God has determined that he would work through the accomplished work of his son in atonement by where he has become flesh and dwelt among us and declared the way of God that God had foreordained before the foundations of the world that he should provide salvation to us that all of us who would call upon the name of the Lord should be saved through his son by way of following and accepting the redemption process that God has done so that we could be no longer subject to the flesh but we would be actually anointed by the Spirit so that we could have the Spirit in us and that we could be pulled to God when He finally takes the Spirit away from the world and that no longer are we of this world but we're of heaven and that we're no longer by way of children of Satan but we've been by adoption Spirit, you know, children of the Father so that we could cry, Abba Father, and to God our Father who has uh, after all created us in the first place and He's always been our Father. Right? No! It's according to His mercy. It's according to His grace. You see, some people think that somehow, because of grace, that automatically you get it. You know, hey, wait a minute. Jesus did it, so I got it. Get it? Got it? Good. You're over. Done. Okay, accept it. Oops. No. You see, somewhere along the line, God got taken out of grace. You can't do that. God gives grace according to His will. Now, you don't go out and try to earn grace. You don't try to out, go out and get grace. You ask God for grace and mercy. And God says, I'll give you grace for grace. He says, I'll make you a deal. Tell you what, come here. I want to talk to you. You be graceful, I'll be graceful. You be forgiving, I'll be forgiving. You be loving, I'll be loving. Because after all, I'm bringing you where I am. You're not bringing me where you are. I've been there, done that, don't want to do it anymore. You see, the world knows how to act like the world, but they don't know how to act like God. So every time that you see some Christian telling you that somebody can't be saved, they're wrong. They are not God, and they have not read the Word of God, because Jesus said in the volume of the book it is written me, Jesus is, his name, the salvation of God. God saves. Yeshua, Yehoshua, Joshua. Jesus is God's salvation. Jesus is the means with which we come into relationship with God. Without Jesus, we do not have salvation. Because 1 John declares to us, He who has the Son has God. He who has not the Son of God has not life. 
So, in order to have life, because Jesus said, this is life eternal, that they should know me and know him who sent me. If you don't know the Son, and you don't know who sent Jesus here in the first place, you don't have eternal life. You may have very religious life, you may have very worldly life, you may have very godly life, you may have very whatever kind of life you want to call it, but you will not have eternal life because Jesus defined eternal life as what it was, what it is, and what it always shall be. The knowledge of God himself personally, individually, and corporeally in the sense of when we all come together. But individually, you need to have that relationship with God. Because it's not a question of whether you reject religion and accept relationship, or accept relationship and reject religion, or accept religion and reject relationship. It's a question of what are you doing with God daily, today? Harden not your heart, it says in the provocation, for today if you hear his voice, you need to respond. Because God himself is the one who said, you are created for my good pleasure. I'm not created for your good pleasure. I owe you nothing. That's God. The bottom line is, we owe our salvation to Jesus Christ. We will bow the knee and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father because that is our salvation. We must accept we're not in control of our own destiny. God is in control of our destiny. We need to ask him to change our destiny. That's the point. You do not have the freedom of choice. You have the freedom to decide whether you go to hell or not because you need to ask God to change your destination because right now, unless you know him, unless you walk with him, talk with him, unless you have fellowship with him and he's told you, you're going to hell, frankly. Because God has provided a way and few there be that find it. And that finding thereof is many are called for salvation. For the God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Everyone is called to salvation, but few are chosen. You see, there's the last little kicker that you forget. Even though we have grace, and we are given grace in time of need, and we are given God's mercy, we need to be chosen. God chooses, or God chooses who he uses, but God chooses us for a purpose. Vessel of honor, vessel of wrath, what are you? Guess what? You don't get to decide except for falling on your face and crying out to God for salvation. Every day, any individual, I don't care if they were Hitler, Abinijad, Iranian, Muslim, Mormon, Christian, Christian scientist, Jew, Gentile, Every single human being that was ever created from the foundations of the world to the day that they died had the opportunity for salvation and according to Romans they have been given that knowledge. That knowledge of salvation and the means with which they could call upon God. They know there is a God according to Romans. But they changed the image of the incorruptible God into the image of corruptible man so that they have changed what God has said to them in their heart and placed in there inside their knowledge that they could have come to salvation into something that they have made into their own image of what salvation is. That's why we go back to and cry out for mercy. We go back to the grace of God that's been given us. We go back to the mercy of God. We find out that salvation is not just simply a make a statement and guess what, we're going to be there. No, we ask God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our being, God help me, God save me, God deliver me from myself. Not God save us and condemn them. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world. He came into the world that he might save the world and that through him salvation might be made known unto all of mankind. Not just America, not just the Muslim, not just the Mormon, but to all the world, for all are called unto salvation, but few are chosen. Be careful. Recognize always that salvation is the process that God has chosen in order to bring a sinful man into a righteous God. And that the way that you do that is a religious process. You do have a religion, whether you'll accept it or not. Your religion is that relationship that you have with God. And that better be your religion, because if you don't have a relationship with God, your religion profits you nothing. But if you have a relationship, you better make it religious, because you need to be with God daily, walking and talking and fellowshipping with Him on a regular basis, so that you are saved.
so that you know when you hear his voice you haven't hardened your heart so that you are walking and talking and fellowshipping with the living God as Jesus said to do for he said on that day when they came to him but Lord haven't we prophesied in your name haven't we done all these marvelous things in your name and he says depart from me I never knew you if he doesn't know you God the Father will reject you we must be accepted by the Son of God we must be accepted in the fellowship of the saints. We must be accepted as one in the Spirit and one in the Lord. Because if we're not, we have not the Son of God. And we have not life. Salvation has come to mankind. And it came in the person of Jesus. And he gave us his words to do, to live, and to be. So we see those and we fail miserably, but we still fall upon our face bow the knee and confess that Jesus is Lord and he can determine anything he wants to do whether for salvation or condemnation for surely on the day that we die we've been given every opportunity for salvation and that with which we will still stand before God and answer according to all that we have thought all that we have said and all that we have done and he says according to your judgment I will judge you you pick it you decide I'll judge and God will the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and he'll let you decide your judgment by your own standards of judgment cry out to God God help you cry out for mercy God help you ask for his salvation ask for his mercy ask for his loving kindness be graceful be merciful be forgiving Proclaim the gospel, which is the good news that God has provided a way of salvation for those who would hear and do according to what Jesus said to do. Don't make it and take it and break it into something that's not little pieces of grace that are kind of scattered abroad without God being involved in the midst of it. For those people that make superficial professions, they aren't saved. For those people that one day say they follow God and next day quit. They aren't saved. But for those who cry out to the living God, for those who call upon the name of the Lord to be saved, for those who are desperately in need of God, and He asks them, will you accept me? They are saved. For surely God hears the cry and the need of the poor and needy. He is not far from those who are desperately crying out to Him. For love. If you love not, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. If you forgive not, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. If you have not grace for others, you are not saved. For grace will be given for grace, mercy will be given for mercy, love will be given for love, and forgiveness, you will be forgiven if you forgive.